be careful the love you show. Mm. Because when you get to a certain level, you're going to be too busy to continue to show it. Oh, my God. And then people going to start looking at you a certain way. And it's not that you changing on them or anything. You just, you, you, you building, you like you growing, you got things going on that they don't understand. So it's crazy because it's like the same that'll build you up mm. or try to tear you down. you down. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yo, what's poppin'? You already know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J. Hill, was in the building. Uh, J. Hill Podcast. Hey, man, this week been going crazy. The, 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 the podcast been going crazy. The guests been going crazy. But, you know, some guests is good for looks. My boy been going crazy. Listen, but then there's other guests where you just, you excited. You feel me? This one right here, it's one of the ones. Simba's in the building. What up, dog? Simba, my boy. How you feeling, man? Man, I'm feeling good, man. Hey, feeling man. good, feeling great. Happy to be here. Of course. Fan of the show. I appreciate you, dog. Yeah. Hey, I feel like I, um, there's so many ways, to, so many places to go with this, but I want to take it back, 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 back. Your, 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 your LA Leaker freestyle was what, 2021? No, 2020. I was hit. I was talking to you in like 2018. Yeah. What was you? What I don't even remember. What was you doing in 2018? Trying to figure it out. Lost. You had stuck. to be doing something good because I hit you up like, yo, where you at, bro? You like in LA? I'm like, bro, I'm trying nah, to go freestyle. I, I lived in LA. Mm. I moved to LA from the Bay Area. Um, you know, in the Bay, we kind of got a lack of infrastructure on the music side of things, and um, I had moved to LA. I started driving down to LA, just realizing, you know, what they had going on out there, seeing different studios, being around different artists, just learning a lot. So I was like, I need to move down here so I could soak up this game. And, um, you know, was out there trying to figure it out, bro. Spending money, losing money, mm. paying for videos I shouldn't have been paying for, paying for features I shouldn't have been paying for. Just out there trying to figure it out. Chasing opportunities, man. Yeah. That's all, that's all you can do. And can, you, can you really say you shouldn't have been paying for it? Because, like, you know, you had to learn from all of that. That's crazy you say that because I just told somebody the other day I was talking about this and they was like, um, they was like, what's all the uh, things you wish you could take back that you spent money on back mm -hmm. then? I was like, it go both hands, but I mean, it go both ways because it's like, yeah, I, what I know now, I wouldn't have spent money on certain things or asked for money from certain things, but I had to ask and spend to get the information to know what it was I needed to do. Because right. the only way to get it right when you ain't got no brochure is to learn from your wrongs. Mm. You know what I mean? So I kept just hitting the wall with certain things. And then as time went on, just figured it out, man. I had a lot of support, just the homies helping me. You know, uh, people investing in me that was like my close friends, close family. And just stayed at it, bro, figuring it out. Yo, it's so many things to talk about with you because I feel like you in that, like, the middle, right? Like, yeah, you lit. You got yeah. some pieces with some heavy hitters. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your tape just uh, dropped. It's, it's fire. So it's like you, you in the industry, but you still, like, Niggas ain't really hip to you right now. Like, yeah, yet. they're still learning. They're still learning. I'm a discovery piece. Exactly. So that's why I said, because so, I feel like you're still on our side. And what I mean by our side, I feel like, I'm, like you know, we still trapping out the, you know what I'm saying? We trapping how we got to trap. And I feel like you're doing the same thing. Yeah. But um, with that being said, like, you're so humble, but you still look, you look good. Yeah. You look like you belong here. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, Come you look on, like man. You're that's, supposed that's, to be that's, here. That's what it's about. But it's, it's also like, when you say our side, right? Like, Explain that. So I'm not gonna lie to you, right? Like I feel like I feel like I'm in the middle too. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like I moved to Atlanta, niggas from the city is like, yo, Jay, you getting I'm getting big interviews now. You know what I'm saying? It's lit. But at the same time, I but I came from the bottom and niggas niggas could attest to it. Like you came yeah. from the bottom. Like it wasn't like no overnight shit. Niggas took yeah. the, the stairs, the elevator been broke. You're fucking right, this <laughs> shit ain't happen overnight. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, when I say our side, I feel like you on my side, like man, this nigga know. Yeah. 
this nigga know. Yeah, nah, it's 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 a grind. I think that's what you what you preaching to is crazy because I was uh just having this conversation with one of my big homies last night. Um and he was basically saying like um when you get to he he was like be careful the love you show mm. because when you get to a certain level you're gonna be too busy to continue to show it oh my god and then people gonna start looking at you a certain Different. way and it's not that you changing on them or anything you just you 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 building you like you growing you got things going on that they don't understand so it's crazy because it's like the same shit that'll build you up Mm. I try to tear you down. you down. Oh my God! Speak the gospel, yo. I wanted. To, it's crazy that you went there, right? Your first track with Roddy, yeah, is uh, which one is it? Never change. Never change, right? Yeah. So I actually wanted to. Act, that's crazy that the universe be working, dog. So you um, you talk about how never change, but you say you gotta change, right? Like we always preaching this, like I ain't gonna change. I'm the same. I'm the same because we we still in that mindset of like. At the bottom, we climbing our way up to the top. We don't really know how it feels to be at the top. Yeah. But not understanding that when you at the top, it's, you got to make some decisions. You got to make some changes in your <clears> life. <throat> because if you keep being the same, you won't, you won't fall off, right? When, I, when I'm saying never change, is like never change who you are as an individual. Mm. Of course, you got to, you know, change certain characteristics. And you got to, you know, apply certain things to where you're going in life. But keep your morals and, and stand on what you believe in. Mm. Whatever it was that got you into the game or got you into whatever it is you're doing, never forget those morals and those principles. Mm. Never change those. Stand on those through all business. So it's like I just left one of the biggest podcasts um, in the city, right? Well, you just came to one, right? Like, listen, listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> Left one of the biggest podcasts it? in the city, who? right, to come to the next biggest podcast. Who in the was city. it? Though? I'm curious. Where was we just at? Uh, I can't even remember, bro. I didn't done so many damn interviews You've been today, working, nigga. It's crazy. but it was it was going crazy, right? But left one of the biggest to come to the next biggest, right? Mm -hmm. But yet and still, finna go pull up on somebody later on who's up and coming. Mm. <sighs> Heavy. You know what I mean? So I could be rich with you. I could be broke with you. Mm. Still gonna be the same. Nah, facts. I'm gonna go that. get that that young man the same interview I'm gonna give you. Mm. Right? Two years ago, people probably wasn't coming to your show. You know what I mean? They probably wasn't tapping in the way they tapping in today. Nah, facts. You know what I mean? So you can't forget the people that was. That's a fact. So when you see somebody that was on the show before and they had some some shit going on. Bring them up here and let them talk about what they got going on. Bro, <laughs> can we talk, bro? It's, it's crazy because, damn, man. Like, it just, it's so, that's why I said, it's certain people I do for the look of it, you know what I'm saying? It's just being real. Yeah. But there's other people where you could just feel it, right? And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I told LaRussell the same thing. I was like, bro, I'm, I was almost scared to meet LaRussell. Shout out, shout out to my brother LaRussell because he the one that put this together. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, he, sir. He hit me. He was like, yo, you got to go do their podcast. They got some dope. I was like, I know, bro. Like, uh, me and bro I, tapped in before. I'm going to pull up on you. I appreciate that, man. I yeah. was saying, but I say that to say, like, people like him, people like you, I was telling them, like, I was scared to actually meet him in person and not, like, physically scared, right? Right, But, like, scared because, like, just watching your movement, both of y'all, just being, just being honest, both of y'all movement, it was like, yo, it was so refreshing. It's like, damn, these niggas is on it. Like, yeah. they remind me of me. Yeah. So I was like, I, I was scared to meet them in a the sense of like, man, if these niggas ain't like how they really is on the gram, I'm gonna yeah. be hurt. So it's refreshing to even hear you speak on these That's things. That's crazy like, you damn. say that, because that happens a lot. Mm. Like, you meet a lot of people you used to look up to, he would be like, damn, this, this nigga's a cornball. You know what I mean? Nah, like for this, real. this ain't who I thought I, he ain't who I thought he was. Man, it's bro, and that's then, crazy. Especially being in the industry, right? Like you, you, like you in the industry now. Yeah, I'm in here now. You in here? How if the industry is a building, right? If you got like how we walked into this building, I'm on the elevator. Mm. I didn't pass security now. Mm. You know Heavy. what I'm saying? I'm on, I'm on, I'm on the elevator. We 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 just going up at this point. All right, so I wanted to uh, I wanted to come on here and vent with you if you don't mind. Okay, come on. You on the elevator. Yeah. But it took a lot to get through that security. Yeah. Niggas is on bullshit. Yeah. Niggas slept on you. Yeah. Niggas is awake now, but yeah. I wanted to talk, especially like these companies, these radio stations, these 
the niggas that really the gatekeepers that really can help a nigga out and 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 help push the culture oh, forward. You want to talk, talk? I'm, yeah, I'm trying to talk, bro. Okay, come on. I know y'all got some it. shit to do, but no, we gonna get to it. I'm come trying on. to talk, bro. Okay. Um, first thing you gotta understand, bro, is this is a business. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This ain't for our liking. People's business ain't going to move based off how you want them to move. Mm. They got a structure, right? So radio is based off of a listener subscribership. So people that's on their way to work, on their way from work or whatever, right? They're listening for music that they want to hear on the way home or Mm -hmm. on their way to their job. Mm -hmm. So your new record might make them change the station, which makes the station lose ratings. Mm Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they can't just risk their ratings to please an up and coming artist or please what you you gotta get it going. Mm. You gotta get it going and you can't blame them because that's their business. That's what they here for. Same thing with podcasters, same thing with artists, right? It's certain features I could get today that I couldn't get a year ago. But I wasn't who I was today a year ago. So you so you actually you actually get it, right? And I and I get that. But I wanted to talk to more so the fresh, cause that had to fuel you. Let's be yeah, real, like that yeah. had to like motivate you in a sense. Like For yeah, these sure. niggas, they gonna That's see. That's what the anger is. What gets you through? Mm. So when did you when did you hit that breakthrough of understanding that okay, it's business. I gotta gotta because, play the game. So I think this is some as black men we all gotta get better at is understanding why we mad, mm. right? Instead of just reacting Sheesh. to being mad. Jeez. understanding why we mad so i used to get frustrated and i wanted to understand well why does this make me mad so i had to go learn things and talk to certain people and get certain answers and by talking and getting certain answers and asking certain questions i would understand and get the information to know well damn i'm mad about a business structure that i want to be a part of mm. i can't change it I got to do what I got to do to put myself in it and be able to move accordingly. So do you feel like you wanted to, do you, d- did you, or do you feel like, okay, the, the infrastructure is, 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 is flawed, right? I really don't care for it. So I kind of want to get in and infiltrate it. And what I mean by that is get in and be lit, be the people that people can recognize and want to make music with, but also show the people that is a, is, is a difference, yeah. right? That, that I can make a difference and I don't have to be like all these fake, all these other fake niggas, I guess. It, it ain't that they fake, bro. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Everybody is doing what's true to them. Just because it ain't real to you don't mean it ain't real to them. This is a great point. You know what I'm saying? So don't look at it as fake. Um, They doing what, what's true to them. That's a great point, bro. Can we... That's a drink. Listen, um, my... uh. I, I shot my guy all the time. He was just in Baltimore, ninety two Q. Yeah. My God, uh, DJ Flow. He always, shout out Flow, man. Yeah, he always he he told me um, cause I used to always refer to myself as like the a genuine guy, right? Mm-hmm. And I was always like, man, these niggas ain't genuine. These niggas ain't genuine. And Flow actually told me he was like, no, everybody is genuine. Yeah, some niggas are just genuinely fucked up. <laughs> like that's just who Facts. they is. Facts. So uh, but nah, but I know, but I know it's still some type of fire in you that's like. Niggas not getting it. Well, I might be wrong. You might have just grown past it. Nah, it ain't. But just doing my research, I see. Understanding okay. why they ain't getting it. Mm. They not getting it for a reason, right? So we gotta make the adjustments to make them get it. You can't just complain about the shit. What's being mad gonna do? You still gotta figure the shit out at the end of the day, this is regardless true. of you being mad or not. This is true. So if my project just dropped, and let's just say. Well, we 11,000 copies go the first week, right? I can't be mad that I didn't do 100,000, right? Mm-hmm. How the fuck do I do 100,000 the next time? No cap. That's how, you, that's how the winners work. Or how do I do 20 to get to 30, to get to 60, to get to the 100? Mm. But be, being mad about it ain't going to do nothing but just have all of us in here in a room... <laughs> Pent up energy, everybody <laughs> mad energy off all. Let me let's figure it out. No cap. I think um for me, I think uh like I definitely let that shit feel me. I'll be lying if I didn't say I, like I get mad, but I'm still I do I do understand the business, right? Yeah. So like I'm the type of nigga that I'll DM, I DM a nigga a million times. In my mind, I'm like, man, niggas is playing with me because if I was this person, he would I wouldn't have to DM a million times. But I also understand why where I am. Yeah. So I don't be mad at him. 
it's really I just let it feel me like these niggas gonna see. No, nah. like these niggas gonna see. But see when you when you when when you get to certain levels, certain different things motivate you. Mm. So I remember being at that space. Oof. I remember being at that space. Now I'm at a space. Champ, how much you told me, little baby, got for the show the other day? This episode is sponsored by BK Juices. Look, man, if you're looking for some drinks that's refreshing and that's also healthy, make sure you check out BK Juices. You can find them online at bkjuices.com. A social media, Instagram is the real BK Juices, and Facebook is BK Juices. If you want 10% off, all you got to do is go online at bkjuices.com, enter the promo code JHill10, you get 10% off. Like I said, if you're looking for something that tastes good, that's refreshing, and that's also healthy for you, check out my people at bkjuices.com. That's BK Juices. 300 <laughs> I ain't there That's my motivation now I'm Damn. not worried about What a nigga think no more Facts or how they feel Baby getting 300 Let me get my 300 baby. I'm trying to get 300 <laughs> <laughs> You feel me What I gotta do Facts Let's get to work You know Hey I ain't mad at that I ain't mad at that shit I'm still climbing So I'm gonna get that to that point Soon Just not yeah. I'm letting you niggas know I'm still mad Come on I'm still in an angry face Come on Yo you uh You said you were talking to your big homie last night right Yeah And he was saying You gotta be careful who you show love to Yeah Right Cause the um because eventually people might start looking at you differently when you get to the top and you just can't show love no more. Yeah. How do you separate or you differentiate your thought process? Because this is something that I wanted to talk to you about. And it's crazy. I ain't got my notes in my hand and shit. But I knew what I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah. But you saying that it was, it was, uh, it struck a nerve because like you came up with, or you you broke through kind of like how um, I'm breaking through. And I mean that like La Russell hit you. Yeah. Right. So you was, um even how you met Gilly, you, he was DMing you. Y'all was showing love to each other. But then you had one of your mans, I guess, that, that was connected to him that connected y'all yeah. so y'all can talk personally. Yeah. Uh, same with, um, I think, what uh, the Nipsey Hustle, how you met him, he asked for the, yeah, the blunt, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You, yeah. And I feel like all of that came with relationships, yep. right? So I would assume that you would kind of want to do the same because that's how you came up. You came up with niggas kind of help, helping you out. Like It probably wasn't a lot, but it was people that was helping you out and that made, made a big difference to your career. Yeah. How do you separate not showing love to everybody but still giving niggas the same uh, pathway or the same help that somebody gave you coming up? It, it, it's respect. You always show respect. You know what I mean? I got, uh, I got friends and family and shit now that just, you know, come to the shows or come to certain things and nigga, they welcome to whatever. Mm. You know what I mean? But they might be looking at the tour manager and the people from the label and all this is well, I was here before that but mm. it's like these the people that's helping run what I got going on now mm. you know what I mean so I'm always a allow anybody to be there but at the same time everybody ain't gonna make it Facts. you know what I mean so sometimes you gotta tell a motherfucker man hey book the flight we got you you know we gonna cover the food and the ride and everything you wanna be out here with us book the flight mm. some people gonna book the flight some people not you know what I mean? You can't get mad at them for not booking the flight. You don't know what they got going on. Okay. You know what I mean? And it ain't right for them to look at you like you should be booking the flight for them. Right. You know, it go both ways. So Appreciate you, um, it's just really a respect factor. Like really just respecting every every part of the process and everything and everybody that has something to do with it to where you never exclude them. You know, you include them, but you mm. include them to a certain extent. Like kind of love them from a distance almost, maybe? Some people you got to love from a distance. Mm. Like so there's certain people I got love for, they just can't come to my shows. But I got love for them. They can't come to your shows because you don't want them or? They just, the environment. They just wouldn't go anywhere. The environment would make them do something that will fuck it up for everybody. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I get so exactly everybody saying. don't need to be around everything. Mm. So there's certain <laughs> times where, you know, I go create that time to go kick it with them when I need to kick it with them. You know, but when I got to handle my business and what I got going on, certain people just can't be around. Now that makes sense. So when I think I was thinking about uh, just giving the love, right? When he said you can't show everybody love, right? I was thinking of like, you know, putting people in position to win, like how your homie put you in position with setting you up with the wild old play or something yeah. like that, right? Like how do you how do you separate who you can who you can help in those situations and who you just don't think you should help. Man, you like I say, bro, who gonna show up? Mm. It's who gonna show up. It's like you could want something for somebody, but that don't mean <laughs> that they want it for themselves. 
Like in my mind, when I first started doing music, I had a whole another vision of how this shit was gonna look. You know what I mean? And it didn't go that way. Mm. It didn't work out that way with the people I thought it was gonna work out with, you know? But it's like certain people gonna be around and you gonna see, bro, always there. You know what I mean? Bro, always making sure I'm up and I'm on time over here. Bro, making sure we got to the uh the 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 performance on time. We got the sound check on time. And you appreciate them things. And as you go, you plug them into certain spots. Mm. So as you leverage up and you start getting them hit records, you start going, hey, I don't want this person to book the driver no more. I want my person to drive. I don't want this person to run me the radio no more. I want my person to run me the radio. Mm. But you got to get there. It's work. It's time and results take time. That makes that make uh make a lot of sense. You uh, while we while we here, right? You 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 spoke on a Breakfast Club about uh how it was one of your songs. You made a song, uh, a lyric about Stat Quo. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and you was basically saying that like he was always telling you what you was doing was wrong. Basically, I'm summing it up. He was always and you could correct me, but he was always saying what you was doing wrong, but he wasn't really telling you how to do it right. Exactly. Right, and that was frustrating. Yeah, very very frustrating because it's like you feel like somebody knows something that can help you and they not telling you. Mm. That's the worst feeling in the world. Imagine talking to a nigga that it feel like he know exactly what you should be doing and he not telling you. Mm. It always and you feel confused, like, hey, like, well, tell me. You know what I'm saying? And then you start realizing over time, shit, he don't know. Mm. You know what I mean? Like he 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 don't he might not know what it is, but he just trying to give me what he seen or what he been through. And at times it just felt kind of just like demoralizing. Like we'd be in front of all these corporate people, like in offices, and then he'd just come in there and be like, What are you wearing? Be like, bro, damn, do that when we leave. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me play my music for these folks and then do what I need to do and then tell them. But he'd just tear me down in front of certain people. And then I'm also I'm I'm somebody that's like acceptive to criticism. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sensitive. So you could tell me, but it would never be no solution. It mm -hmm. would just always be just a problem. Mm -hmm. So he'd tell me problems over and I'm like, all right, how I get it right? Never tell me. Then you hear little things. Uh, my freestyle started going viral. People call me, what's that quote? You say you a freestyle rapper. All right. Then you hear certain things after I make a big homie. Stat quote say you can make music, but you'll never sell tickets. Mm -hmm. It's like, damn, bro, do you got a personal problem with me or something? Like, What was the uh, the actual bar? What was it? Stat quote told me my music just wasn't it. And if I ain't have a gimmick, then people wouldn't give a shit. It's crazy how a nigga who ain't made nobody's list can make you feel like you can't go where you trying to get. Mm. Isn't that crazy? Like, cause even even that, it's it sounds like social media, Loki. For sure, it's like all these people behind these computers got everything to say. Right. The difference between Stat is he's an executive, mm. so he's somebody involved in the business and he do it on a high level. So as somebody that's broke artists and built artists and broke records it's like if you're gonna tell me these things bro help me get it right like don't just break me down like because you really in it you're not somebody just a opinionated ass person on the outskirts of the industry that don't understand it you get it from all angles so like help, help me get it so i ain't out here looking crazy mm. but i never received that information and it ain't no bad blood towards that i heard right now he mad at me you know what I'm saying? He's been telling a few people he's mad at me. But I got love for Stat. But at the same time, bro, that's part of my story. You and, know? That's what, and I used to feel a certain way in them meetings when, when he had, when he would do that to me. And I and it was right for me to tell my story on my project for the world to know. And that's what I wanted. That's where I wanted to go, right? Like you said, it ain't, it ain't no beef. Would you have that? I'm not saying it's beef because we ain't trying to promote that. But Man, I'm saying like no you, beef. If right, I see Stat... Whether he mad at me or not, I'm going to shake that nigga hand. There we go. But what you explained to him, like you told me, like you told Charlemagne, like you told other interviews that, like, yo, 
you wasn't really get because I look at it like I don't look at it as a negative thing. I look at it like we got different coaching styles, right? Yeah. So even if on a football team, I can't yell at every single player. Some 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 players have to come at with a different approach so they can get it. Yeah. And when you were saying it, in my mind, I'm just thinking like, damn, what if it's kind of like love language? I'm like, yo, what if he he really meant the best for him for you? Right, what if that really I'm is? sure he did. Yeah. It was the way it was communicated exactly. to how I received it. Mm. So technically, I could be wrong for how I received it. Technically. You know what I'm saying? Because it probably came from a genuine place mm. of what he was saying and trying to that was probably his way of trying to help, help. me get it right. Right. But you he wasn't delivering it but for you to be able to The way it was delivered to me was like, damn, bro, you embarrassing me in front of all these people. Right. You know, so I, it, it go both ways. You you don't know. And that's why as a man, when I see the man, I could shake his hand and we could have a disagreement mm. or whatever it may be. But I ain't about to swing on stat when I see him. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to fight that man. Like, it's love. That's yep. just how I felt. No, nah, it, it, it was just interesting because, like, you know, I have the conversation with my girl all the time when you said it. I was like, damn, like, my girl be like, all you do is like, I think the criti the criticism outweigh the love sometimes. And I be like, bro, I just be trying to help you out. You know what I'm saying? When you said it, kind of hell, I'm like, damn, like, somebody could look at it like that. Yeah. Right? And I feel like with the right conversation, a simple, uh, simple conversation could really settle the differences. For sure. Right? That's that's all I was thinking. I was like, I wonder if it's like, are they talking? That's, that really was what? Nah, bro, I used to text that man stat like, bro, be, help me, bro, be my manager. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like what I need to do Because I thought he knew what it was Exactly I needed to do to get it right I text him I ask him questions every time Stat, what if I do this? Well, yeah, it, it gave me little answers and shit But it was never no interest So for me it was just kind of like Alright Bro just gonna tear me down Every time I come around him So I don't want to be around him mm. You know what I mean? Like there's certain times I didn't been on the way to Certain studios, people like stat here. I'm like, I ain't going over there. Mm. I don't feel like getting tore down. That makes sense. You and know, that... I know what he gonna tell me, and it ain't gonna be nothing to help me get it right. Let me go somewhere where somebody can help me get it right. Did you have any mentors that help lead you in the right way? Hell yeah, all my homies I'm in here with, mm. uh, my 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 bros that's not here, people from Atlantic Records, people from Star Island, my mama. You feel me? Just people that want to see you win. Can we talk about that for the people that might not get it right? Because I just got it. Like you said, my bro is that's in here. Yeah. Right? Clearly, you the one with the jewelry, with the, the, the star, that the people that want to interview. But you still can receive wisdom, knowledge, and mentorship from the ones that's not in the spotlight. For right? sure. A lot of times I feel like we get caught up in trying to, we want that that mentor that that look like what we want to be like. But we're missing, we overlooking the mentorship that, that's coming from the from the right of us or to the left of us, right? Like we overlooking that because they don't look like what we what we want them to look like. Bruh, I'm just the paint on the car, bruh. Mm. If you look at a car, if you go look at a Bentley right now, it got paint on it. You just see the car. But if you take that paint off, you're going to see a frame, a transmission, mm. an engine, yeah. an inside with a goddamn steering wheel, something that make the steering wheel go... And that's it's all these parts that make it move. I'm just the paint on the car, bro. Mm, mm, mm. You feel me? So it's like, why wouldn't I listen? This mm. how we been getting it right by us talking and figuring it out. So I'm not just going to get somewhere, stop listening, and go find a bunch of other people to listen to. Nah, we've been figuring it out this way. You're going to keep on figuring. We're going to always find a way. Nah, facts. It's just, <laughs> it's like I said, it's, it's, it's way, refreshing Jeff. to hear it, man, because it's like, yo, so many people, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people can, like, even being young, we just be looking for the wrong mentorships. It'd be like, yo, I ain't never had no mentor. Like, that's But that's because a lot of our parents taught us the wrong shit. Mm, talk about it. They taught us the wrong shit, bro. Just reading some shit, the little nigga who killed P&B was with his daddy. That shit's crazy. How you let your son go do some shit like that, bro? What are you thinking to even be with him? He was with him. He was the getaway driver, bro, he right? he took him there. I don't get it. Since we hit, since we there, right? You said something. I think it was on the breakfast club. He was like, um, you don't really wear your jewelry. Yeah, you did it to the interview. But, like, you about to stop wearing it because it kind of is like putting your people down. Yeah. Like, because it's like, bro, as a rapper, you what makes people take you serious as a rapper is wearing all this shit. Mm -hmm. 
So you got to wear all this shit to make people be like, what do you do? You know what I mean? So at some point when they figure out what you do, when do you take it off? Because mm. now you just coming around with all this shit on. They didn't build you up, got you to a certain level, and they ain't getting nothing from it. Mm. So who the only they? thing the ones in your circle, who, who not, you say they? not the ones in your circle, people in your neighborhood where you come from, niggas who ain't like you from the beginning. You know what I mean? Like it's all parts of it. It's all parts of it. So it's like you get built up. Young, let's say we take a young nigga named what's the name of this alcohol? Bamboo, Bamboo. right? Young Bamboo. Young Bamboo makes a song from his closet. The song goes viral on TikTok. The whole city of where Young Bamboo is from is going up to this record, right? Young Bamboo go travel the world and get a bunch of jewelry and a bunch of money, right? All them people still there. Young Bamboo ain't coming back with the information on how to get out, building infrastructure for people to do the same thing. He just over there in the neighborhood every day with jewelry on. So at some point, niggas is going to be like, man, what this nigga think he is? We hungry. Mm. Niggas is fucked up out here. So, it, ain't, it ain't made for us to win. Playing plan devil's advocate is not made for us to win, for sure. But playing devil's advocate, right? Because I think you're absolutely right. But at the same time, it's like, like you said, coming into the game, I say this, I think I said like 10 times this week, uh, mothers always, I, I hear mothers always say like, the only thing about parenthood is you don't get a blueprint, right? You don't get no, no, yeah. no, no map for the shit. Same with the industry, same with life, right? You won't really get no map for it. So, yeah, you said he ain't coming back giving the inf information away. We seen that though. We seen Nipsey Hussle literally giving back to his community and still get killed, yeah. right? And he ain't even he not wearing the biggest chains. So it's like we see that and it still can happen, right? So again, I'm just playing devil's advocate. And on the other sense, me personally, I feel like. It could look like we down at somebody else or fl flossing yourself. I think Jay-Z said it. He said, I, um, it wasn't my intention or basically it wasn't my fault how my lifestyle made you feel away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's just my lifestyle. That's what I work for. You work hard for that. For sure. You should be able to wear it. Like, that's a, it's kind of a the trophy. The thing is, though, bro, is like shit going to happen. Exactly. Shit going to happen anywhere, not right. just in the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? You could be in the suburbs, bro, and... Running to it with a nigga who girl you fucked 15 years ago and he just got it on him that day and feel some type of way, nigga, and j he just want to do it right then and there. Right. It's going to happen. Right. Like, shit is going to happen. You can't run from life. It's going to happen. And that's not to justify, you know, anything that happens in urban communities or in the ghetto or anything. I'm just saying shit going to happen anywhere. The problem is when certain shit happen with, like, rappers and shit, because we so much in the media, it's publicized more. Mm. So it's white people that get shot every day. It's Hispanic people that get shot every day. They just don't fucking turn it into a goddamn trend. Right. We gonna make songs about the shit and put people on t-shirts and lanyards and, you know what I'm saying, promote the shit. They move on and let it be what it is. We promote it as a culture. And then we promote it like it's cool. We promote it like, nigga, the more bodies you got, you the coolest nigga in the world. Nigga, you killing niggas. Right. At the end of the day, you killing you niggas. People, that shit ain't people, cool. Fathers, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters. Like, that's not cool. But I guess what you're saying about the jewelry thing to tie back in is basically you, you would rather just make it home. Facts. That's what, like, I get it. Just, just make it, it don't matter. Bro, I wear this shit for work. You know what I'm saying? It starts a conversation, they get the job done. But once you know who I am, it really is no need for it. My job is to make it home. Y'all know I can make music now. Mm. So I'm not finna go. We in the A. I'm not finna go run to any ghetto out here with all this shit on just to look like the man. If I'm gonna go to the ghetto, I need to go be doing something influential. Mm. I need to be bringing them kids some. Some food or some backpacks, some shoes, some clothes or something. You know what I'm saying? Not just over there with a cameraman with all my jewelry on to show everybody I'm the nigga and I still could come over here with all my, like, man, that shit lame. No, nah, it is. You just That's flexing on your people and you using them to elevate your platform so you could fucking leave them and they still got to be there. Nah, that shit lame, bro. What about the, um? you, you talked about um the security aspect, right? Yeah. Like just... 
move and militant. Yeah. And shit like that. Um and you was like, it's only like three hundred dollars. I mean, how much ever it is, right? Security. Every security guard is different. Yeah, no matter what, you know it what I mean, it's, it, it it varies. It don't it don't really matter the price. Let's not put a price on it. Let's say yeah. it's two. It don't matter, right? My thing is, do you sometimes feel like you downplay your celebrity? Not even not even by choice, right? Sometimes you might not have that whatever the price is to get security. Sometimes we just or sometimes we just don't think is is security is needed. Yeah. Do you feel like you you ever be in, in those moments? I look at it like when you get to a certain level, you're going to need security at all times. And I'm not just saying a security guard. You know, you might need your people to secure you. Mm. You know what I mean? You can't just be, like, I can't just pull up to your podcast by myself at this point. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I have to pull up a certain way. Um, There's certain events that we going to go to to where I might not be able to pull up how I pulled up today. We might be more deep, three, four, five, six, six security guards. You know what I'm saying? It, it changes as you grow. But you got to protect yourself at all costs. So even if you ain't got money for a security guard, you can still secure yourself. Mm. You can still, okay, I'm going to get to the venue 15 minutes before I need to perform, right? Boom. I'm going to jump in the truck. I'm a I'm a park my car around the corner from the club and call the truck and me and all my homies gonna get in the truck. Then after I'm done performing, homie got the truck waiting outside. So as soon as we done taking pictures and everything, we could jump back in the car. He could pull us right around the corner where nobody got to see the car that people I want to see me in is at. Mm. It's a way to secure yourself. But we just be out here just like Macho Man Randy Savage, like ain't nobody gonna do nothing to me. And I dare the world to try it, and I'm gonna kill him. It's just like, bro. Yeah, and I ain't secure even, yourself. That's a fa that's a great point because I like I guess when you say security, a lot of people think of security the cost behind it. But like, that's a great point. I'm talking about more so of um, even getting back to that point. I'm glad you made that point. But getting back to the point of, do you feel like sometimes you downplay your celebrity just like when you you might be at home, right? You might just be chilling. Like PNB Rock was eating with his girl. I don't think he thought nothing was going to happen. Like I'm not thinking to get security to be out with my girl eating. <clears throat> do you feel like you downplay your celebrity in those in those moments? Like when you feel, nah, feel because familiar? If I was eating at that Roscoe's P and B Rock was at, I would have had security. That's just my opinion. Okay. What about when you home with your homies? Like just kicking it in the town, kicking it in your neighborhood. I'ma be secure. Okay. I might not have security. Okay. Right? But I'ma be with some people that can secure what we got going on in that moment. I like that. That makes sense. You that know? Makes sense. I fuck with it, man. Yo, um, you got this project, man. Uh, you you doing all this radio? I see you the funk flex shit, uh, yeah. LA leaker shit. I had hit you up a while ago for a freestyle, and you said you was gonna pull up. Yeah. I'm curious, are you saving certain freestyles for certain platforms? It's not that I'm saving them. It's like that shit is like it's like great rap. Mm. That's not ordinary rap, you know? So when you do it, it's like, it gotta be done right. Mm. It gotta be on the right platform, like the right people saying the right things that connect to the culture at the right time. I could come up here right now and rap, but I feel like this conversation is more important nah, for sure. than 100%. a rap. Way more important. You know what I'm saying? Because of where both of us are in our, in our career. But if I'm at a Funk Flex, if I'm at a Sway, if I'm at a Cosmic Kev, if I'm at a LA Leakers, these are elevated platforms where the world is watching. Now that's true, but you know I, what I'm saying? Nah, so that's it's a like fact. certain things, you got to go into them with that mindset of the world is watching, let me speak. Let me say something that's impactful. And if you do that every time, how impactful is it going to be? Mm. That's a great point. I think, like, I, that's why I said in the beginning, right? I still, I feel like I still represent those ones in, in, at the bottom. And I say that to say, I feel like no matter where you rap, it's going to bring, and you don't have to do it every time, but no matter where you rap, because it's special, I'm not yeah. asking you to rap right now, but no matter where you freestyle, it's going to be special. No, so do you sure. do you think about, all right, let me bless this, this platform. But it's what makes it special, mm. right? So LA Leakers, I will never let a woman make me feel less of a man because I don't want to buy her a Birkin. So send me back to the streets. I send you back to your mama house. That was the same week that Sweetie has said, 
If he don't buy you a Birkin, send him back to the streets. Mm. So the internet was going to eat it up. The show, BMF, is on Stars, 50 Cent show, BMF. Big Meech ain't sell more dope than Big Pharma. It's wild. The show is the number one show. People's watching BMF. What's the number one problem West Coast people have with Funk Flex? Tupac comments. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's addressing things on the right platforms at the right times. It's kind of like marketing, I guess. And every time ain't the right time. You know, okay. it ain't always the right time to just do that. It's a certain time to do it. And it's a certain time to speak how we speak in the day. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But it's, it's a lot that go into it. Okay. I was just curious, man. Man, I fuck with you. I appreciate you for pulling up. Uh, yeah, you on tour right now with um, my boy Joyner, Joyner Lucas. Lucas. Yeah. Uh, Shout out to Joyner too, man. We was just uh, texting each other. We was having a real conversation. Shout out to him. I, I'm gonna highlight you offline about that. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to him. He's doing his thing. Yeah. Um, shit, man. Uh, I appreciate it, bro. I I fuck with you pulling. Let's up. talk about it right now. What you said? You gonna highlight me offline about something? Oh no, nah, I mean shit, shit. I um, I was. Kind of similar, like me and you were DMing, and I guess like I don't know how it stopped, whatever it can be. Yeah, and I was DMing his uh his manager. I'll tell you shit. I forgot this nigga name. We was talking, and then niggas get busy and just forget about the kid, man. Nah, bro, niggas don't forget. Niggas just busy. No nah, facts. This it ain't is, personal. This nigga superstar now, bro. Nah, no, man. it ain't. No, <laughs> bro. The, <laughs> I'm telling you. It ain't personal. Oh, no, I don't take it personal. No, no, listen, no, no, I don't I take know, it personal. For shit. But this is what I'm saying. You can't look at it like a nigga got ghost on you or a nigga ignore it. Bro, niggas is busy, bro. Nah, for sure. That man on the road right now, we doing 19 dates. That man got two tour buses and a staff of people and a family to feed and got to get back home, bro. It's a lot going on. It's 2,500 people a night in these venues. Mm. It was a thousand people last night in a thousand. I know it was fifteen hundred people in a thousand seater venue last night. You know how much that man got to do? Not for sure. He got to talk to booking agents. He got to talk to production companies. He got to make sure this man's straight. He got to check on his family. He got to check on the label business. He got to check on the merch. You can't get mad at a man, bro. And he when he he might just not see it right now. Nah, but for sure. as long as you continue to work, a nigga going to see you. You just finesse me into this conversation because I said we were going to. I'm just <laughs> telling you. You just finesse me. <laughs> a nigga going to see you. <laughs> so it's like you can't you can't be like, they got ghost on me. Bro, that man nah, busy, bro. Nah, I feel you, but, but not, nah, bro. Listen, bro, no. You going to be busy one day. <laughs> right. And somebody going to say the same shit about you. And the reason I'm telling you this Go is because the shit I told you in the beginning of this interview, my big homie told me last night. When you show love from the beginning and you're not able to do it at the same speed, niggas want to tear you down. Mm. And I'm not saying you're doing that, but you're showing signs of that. Mm. And you can't do that, bro. I feel you. But again, because I know me and I'm respectful to it, I know like you, we give different advice in different places, right? Yeah. And I'm glad we had this conversation. I, fuck, I actually love when like niggas disagree on this shit. But I say that to say like, if you didn't have that fire, that fear, you wouldn't be where you at right now. So I get what you're saying. I respect yeah, it. Sure. And I'm never going to put nobody down. Like for I said, sure. I'll, you're talking to the wrong nigga. I'll, I would DM a nigga a million times. For sure. I'll take none of that shit personal. For sure. But what, the shit I might say or the, you might say signs, no, nah, that's just my, that's my, that's my fire. That's my, that's my fuel. And you that's what's going to make you great. Yeah. So like, I'm I, like, no, I'm going to still say, nah, niggas is ghosting me because if I was funk flex, like, that's just my motivation. Yeah. It's just like, I ain't hating, I ain't mad at nobody, but. I'm going to be like, nah, because if I was, if I was, niggas will answer that DM. So, I mean, it just feel like yeah. it is. Like, it is what it is. And, and as it should be, but don't look at it like, and I'm telling you this because as as black men, bro, we got to share information with each other. Love, that's so, what's I remember saying little things like that and feeling that way. Mm. You know what I mean? And it wasn't that. Mm. It wasn't that at all. Like, I remember times, bro, when I used to, oh, man, I know such and such, he won't give me a verse. He say he my homie, woo. Bro, when I seen that man life and what he had going on, you think he worried about a verse for me? Fuck no. And, and, and even at a low, on a lower level, like, to, to show you that I understand, I was talking to somebody, and um, I guess we was talking for, like, a year before I got it, like, two years before I got an interview. And I understand it because some people just not even worth it, right? Not even, 
not not even bad. It's people in my DM right now. I'll be a hypocrite to not understand. It's people in my DM right now that I'm not answering. Yeah. I don't answer to everybody. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like what they got, it, it's nothing against them. It's just they aren't worth where I'm at right now, and that's yeah. okay. And it's the same with me to somebody else. I understand that. It's just little shit. I just I just get motivated differently. I just let like, no, that shit motivate but me. But I get it. That's bro. what it's for. You use it as motivation. But all I'm saying is, it's two it's two sides of motivation, mm. right? It's the side that inspires you, and it's a side of jealousy, mm. right? Sometimes when a nigga is jealous of you, right, and it's two sides of jealousy, right? It's a side that motivates you, and it's a side that make you envious, mm. right? And then sometimes you could be so envious of a motherfucker you want to do something to him. Sometimes you could be so motivated to make you do something for yourself. And that's the perspective you speaking from. Mm. You not no envious nigga, and I can see that. You not no jealous nigga. You know what I'm saying? You motivated. For sure. And you should keep that fire. All I'm saying is don't ever let it turn into jealousy. Okay. Don't let the frustration make you feel like it's personal enough to where you got a personal issue with a nigga because he ain't responded to a DM or... You know what I'm saying? Did, you don't know what nah, they got sure. going on. I ain't about to try to like fight nobody. No, nah, I know. I know. I'm just. They're not I'm even right just for you. This. We speaking to nah, the nah, public. You know what I'm saying? But just, but just saying, fun. like, don't never let it turn into that because it's like you don't know what that person got going on. Bro, I think that's crazy that some niggas are like that though. Like some I, niggas. But that's how we is as humans, bro. That's crazy, bro. That's how we is as humans. We don't know how to communicate, especially as black people. We don't know how to communicate with each other. So as we form our own opinion and turn it into a fact in our mind. Mm. It's mm. like, nigga, just because it's a fact to you don't mean that's what's actually going on. Mm, mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? It could be some old other shit going on. This man, mama probably didn't die. Girlfriend and cheated on him. Yeah, that nigga ain't worried about writing no verse for you right now. We just talking about this. Like, literally, like, you could be hitting a nigga up, trying to get some help, whatever the case may be. With Buka, we just talked about it. With Buka, it's, it's crazy. It's like you go to your, your people's or your hometown, and, like, a nigga is, is jealous of you. Yeah. Because you ain't doing something for them, and they think you fake. Facts. Whole time, he got mad shit going mad on. Mad shit. Nigga don't even know what. That nigga don't even have a clue that you down or you hurt. Nigga you. don't even know you want the verse or trying to get in touch with you. Nah, that shit is crazy. Bro. I'm dealing with some shit right now. One of my people from where I'm from uh, moved to a certain city we about to get ready to go to, right? And he be calling everybody, yo, tell him I'm trying to come backstage. I'm trying to woo, woo, woo. I'm trying to holler. So I tell him, tell him I got him on the ticket, but I can't do the backstage thing. You know what I'm saying? Our passes is taken up. Feel me? The person who I'm on the tour with, he got people he need backstage. It's media that need to come backstage. But I got him a ticket. Mm. Oh, that nigga fake, bro. I got him a ticket, though. That That's... nigga can't get me back, bro. Fuck that nigga, bro. Bro, I got you in there, bro. Niggas is crazy. You know what I'm saying? You want me to do what you want me to do. And because I ain't doing it, now nah, I'm fake. Yeah, niggas is crazy. Sheesh. So it's, you know, you can't please everybody. Mm. It is what it is. Well, man, like, shit, you you finessing me out that conversation. So I told you, people need be, to hear that though. Niggas, niggas gonna be like, nah, this nigga J H. Niggas is finesse me. <laughs> but I appreciate you, bro. Uh, let f for the people that don't know, or niggas know for, for sure. The and all that. At shit. the real symbol on all platforms, T H E R E A L S Y M B A. Y'all can follow me on all platforms. J Hill Podcast, man, great episode. Simba, heavy. It's a wrap. We out. Let's get it. Good shit.